Uh, thank you for uh, your very kind and generous introduction and good afternoon everyone and Ramadan Karim. As the title of the presentation uh, explains, uh, the purpose of our conversation is to discuss how to move from the old perspective of human resources to transform, them, to transform us as leaders in resources for our human capital. But before uh, diving into the presentation, our discussion, let me say that what we are going to share today and our conversation will be based on my opinions, my personal opinions, and the result of my research, and is not related, no, this, these are not the opinions of my employer, which has no responsibility on what I'm going to share with you today. So, these reflections are fundamental because um, it's uh, um, the, the, the initial reflection is important because uh, we are we have as we discussed in the previous conversations with the previous speakers today we are in this pandemic together with our human resources and um, before um, before we think about and we plan how to do that we should ask ourselves uh, a few questions. What kind of leader do I want to be during this very hard experience? And what actions am I going to take to make sure I will be remembered for that? And uh, how will I know after this experience if I have done good or not? These reflections are fundamental because although the pandemic is terrible, it is temporary by nature. And after the first initial reaction, which was based on the, the, the need to and the urgency of reducing the costs, we have realized, all of us, all uh, people dealing with human resources have realized that our business is also putting our human capital at the core. And this is particularly relevant in times of crisis because the actions we take in these specific moments will, uh, will have an impact on the years to come and we will be judged about also on the actions we have taken to accommodate the, the needs of all the stakeholders involved, including our human resources. Therefore, if we have taken fair decisions about our employees, we will be judged upon that. So when we take decisions, we have to evaluate the short, medium, and long-term impact. What if I, what's the impact if I terminate an employee or a, a group of employees? Will I be able to hire them, other people, when the crisis will be over, when the business will, will start running again? Because normally we... When we take decisions, we normally focus on our clients, but also it's, and this is why it's fundamental taking care of our employees and human resources, because they take care of our clients. They Do serve we, our customers. Yes. Allow me to stop you here, if you don't mind. You sure. mentioned a, a clients and uh, employees. Uh, do you think that, okay, even if I lay off, some people will say, okay, I can lay off my employees now, financial crisis is happening but my clients will understand that. Uh, and the new employees or the existing employees will take the load of the clients. Uh, so everyone will share that. I will not get the same service as before because it's an epidemic and people understand it. Do you agree on that or not? Well, I agree uh, on the one side, uh, but in my opinion, what's really important is the way we take our decisions. If we take sure. fair decisions, the way we take decisions have a very important um, impact. If our clients will perceive and will see that we have acted with integrity, we have taken, taken fair decisions towards our employees, they will trust us and they will continue to do business with us because the, the crucial point is after COVID, this experience has, has been very um, hard for everyone. So after, in the post-COVID, what will really matter is the way we have acted and taken our decision because people will, will decide, and our customers as well, will decide to do business with the people they, and the companies they can trust, they can rely upon because they will feel that if we have acted fairly and according to values and principles, they will be supported in case they will, have, will face any kind of problem or crisis. 
because and, and therefore again they will continue to be our clients because we have demonstrated integrity and integrity means trust so this is a very important point and thank you for this question yes again the decision of terminating laying off employees will be uh, uh, will be difficult to accept but if we manage the process in the right way by keeping um, sticking to our values and demonstrating integrity clients will look at it and will continue to trust us but the question now Luigi, is how we do that you know, sometimes employers have to lay off people have to terminate people and you mentioned communication in what kind of communication we need to, to do as, uh, as you say it's very correct uh, termination will be inevitable in many cases so when we have to take care to, to, to take such uh, harsh decisions what is really important is the way we again manage the terminations uh, the, and the layoffs because Sometimes, you know, as managers, we start the conversation with our employees like, ah, this is very hard to me. But in these situations, it's not about us. It's about the employee. It's about their lives. It's about their families that will be impacted by the termination and the loss of jobs. So what, is, what becomes very important is the way we communicate the news and also the way we communicate the news also to the people who will remain will stay will continue to work with us because layoffs are emotionally and cognitively overwhelming for everyone also for people who stay so what is important when we manage termination is showing in one word humanity which means having compassion treating people with fairness, respect, um, co mm, communicating to the employees that it's not about them, it's not about performance, it's about a situation, an unpredictable situation, which is going all over the world, is going around, it's not our um, fault, nor the employee's fault. And what I find the most important thing in case of termination is necessary and needed to continue to run the business efficiently, is giving the time to the employee who is affected by our decision to be listened, to express his emotions, frustrations, because this is where we show care. Sure. Now, that I is, have... That uh, is reply to, to your question. Absolutely. I have another one, if you allow me. Please. Now, we have to take the hard decision and we have to lay people off. Unfortunately, that's the situation. Now, what about the people who are still with us? Is there any policies, type of communication? Oh, you're ready for that. Please. Yes. You <laughs> because in addition to the people who, unfortunately, will lose their job, there will be the employees who will continue to work, fortunately, with us. And uh, um, again, as the initial title uh, says, how can we transform remote employees in resourceful humans? Now, as uh, Noha say, be, said before, I really appreciated, the, uh, in addition to the other speakers, in particularly her, because she went through, uh, she analyzed also the psychological aspects of the COVID in the workplace, which uh, resonate a lot with my, uh, my perspectives. So, First of all, we have to redefine as managers and leaders our expectations toward the employees because um, it's not about the working hours. It's about results. It's about outcome. And, by, and the, the, the needs of an employee during a pandemic or a remote work will be the same. Autonomy, sense of belonging, sense of purpose, sense of direction. Uh, sense of accomplishment. So what's really important is giving more freedom actually to the employees instead of controlling them all. So no micromanagement at all and giving them the freedom to choose the way they want to perform their tasks or achieve the, their objectives. Uh, giving them the possibility to, as Noha said before, to develop some creative way to achieve. Uh, because this will definitely uh, reinforce their sense of accomplishment. Of course, we said before, communication is very important. And it's not only, as I wrote on my slide, communication, uh, communicating more, 
but communicating also in a different way, in a more empathetic way, showing care. Because this is a crucial moment where, again, the only tool to cure the, um, the pain of the social distancing and the remote work is humanity. Is the one word that can really make a difference. So communication means also giving feedback and giving feedback not only at the very end uh, of the period of the performance period, but giving feedback constantly and acknowledging not only the great work, but also the good work. Because in this particular experience, uh, with the lack of human physical interaction we don't see each other very often and although we have virtual meetings we all acknowledge that it's not the same so by communicating the the achievements this also will um because recognition is one of the most important engagement tools the moment i feel that what i'm doing is not only noticed, noticed by my employer but also appreciated my sense of belonging, my sense of accomplishment will increase a lot, which means I will become more engaged, more productive, and, and of course this is positive for the business as well. And one important thing that I believe all speakers have gone through already is the importance of reminding the, our, our employees that we do not stop learning during COVID or during the social distance related to the pandemic we will have great learning opportunities. What is really important to me is, again, to show care to our employees, is to define, discuss with them individually, the one-to-one, -one, which is absolutely important because it, it is exactly there where the employee feels acknowledged and feels the, the employer is taking care, is to discuss the learning, the specific learning opportunities with each of our employees. Because the, at the moment, we can benefit from a massive offer of even free training. But what's really important is to take care of the single and individual needs of our employees so that they feel that we are tailoring the, the, the training on them. Sure. Luigi, I have here, uh, I'd like to get your uh, input more on the learning part. Do you feel that employers should push their employees for learning, especially nowadays it's an e-learning, or they should just wait them and ask for that certain course? Uh, well, again, there is no one size fits all, but uh, and so the, some people will, will proactively propose to their employers or line managers some training they would like to attend online. Other um, people will need to be stimulated by their employers, but definitely a conversation with, will open the discussion. And even the most reluctant person uh, may rethink about the learning opportunities and the opportunity also to make this uh, reflective period very productive. And upskilling is amazing because you, especially in this period, you can learn new skills and reinforce the ones you already have. And strengthen them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, again, just to complete the the the, the um, what we discussed in the previous slide about communication, communicating publicly but also individually is very important. Asking our people how uh, how they feel, how are they coping with the social distance, with the family around, and reminding them that their work is important also for mom because they need to feel a vital element of the company, of the organization, and also that it, their contribution is really valued. These are, again, the, the same principles that I discussed before about the self-determination theory. We need to feel appreciated. We need uh, to be acknowledged for the value of our contribution. This is absolutely fundamental, especially in the remote work when our employer normally doesn't know what we are doing throughout the days and during the working hours. Sure. What if I'm not a big fan of social distancing? What, what you suggest, what you say? What's really important, because I think, except the very introvert people, uh, human, humans are 
social animals and we all need social interactions. Uh, a colleague of mine uh, a few weeks ago said, Luigia, we talking, why are we talking about social distancing? We should talk about physical distance because socially we are still interacting. This is very true. However, it's not uh, that easy. <laughs> so it's very important that um, we uh, stimulate our people to reduce the impact of the social distance. And how can we do that? Well, it's a very, it's a period where um, our lives are filled with uh, unpredictability. Unpredictability is, uh, the, the, it means everything nowadays. So how can we support our employees in finding a new routine? Routine means predictability. Routines means, routine means doing the same things over and over again so that we can expect, we can predict the outcome. Why rituals and routines are very important? Because they create the so-called safe space and psychological safety is one of the most um, the crucial uh, um, aspects of leadership creating a, a safe space where employees can give they, they can come at work with the, with their all self and express themselves the way we are uh, the way they are and uh, without being concerned or scared to express emotions so rituals um, <clears throat> like initial meeting at the beginning of the day or at the end of the, the day, the final meeting at the end of the week, they create predictability. Predictability means comfort zone security. And it's, there is a lot of research showing that employees who work in the comfort zone, they are way more productive than employees that don't feel this safety. So um we need to support our employees and um there are different ways uh, for example what we do uh, with my team every uh, at the beginning of every meeting just be before the meeting starts we use uh, homer simpson's uh, ex expressions a fearful happy uh, overwhelmed and we put it in our uh, um, uh, in our uh, page before the huddle starts uh, so that everyone knows the way each other feels and we are all allowed to be frustrated and happy or to share our enthusiasm for something. This is also, this also creates a, a safe space. And while this, when this become, becomes a, a new routine, it will contribute to balance the, the, the uh, employee mindset in the, uh, during the remote work. Sure. Uh, Luigi, uh, I have a question here again. Now, re working remotely from home, that means my manager, my colleagues are not seeing what I'm doing. So that I might be in a call, as, as uh, I know how I was saying, I might be in a call and then they call me. So there is a lot of distraction. That's one. And there is what we think it's a multitasking. We do a lot of things at the same time. Yanni, do we face that issue or just me? Uh, well, I think that all people working from home with families and kids, especially with schools and daycares closed, are facing uh, lots of issues. And the majority of us think uh, thinks that we are multitasking, but we are not multitasking. <laughs> at all we're we not <laughs> no we're not we okay. are more task switching task switching okay. so we, make more sense. we have yes. different uh, multiple full-time jobs a spouse teacher cook uh, cleaner professor in addition to our uh, <laughs> statutory job so we cannot actually be multitasking multitasking but there's a, the, again, there's a science uh, showing that the, the brain cannot focus on more than one thing at the same time. So when we think that we are multitasking, we are just shifting our attention through different tasks. So multitasking doesn't exist. I'm sorry, especially for women, because we really think it's a women thing uh, of uh, feeling proud for being multitasking. I strongly believe that we are in our houses 
uh, working from home, we are facing too many distractions. But in addition, I would say, Sinan, in addition to the um, many um, distractions that come from the family, and I have to admit, the fridge is one of my main distractions because I, as Italian, I love food. So for me, breaks are related to coffee and something else. Um, so what's really important is that uh, in addition to the family distractions, we also have um, the technology. Many, um, too much connection, which means messages, social media, and uh, um, the computer, the, all the digital and technological inputs that uh, take time from our focus and distract us, which means also that we are less focused and therefore also less effective. And there is a, research, a very recent research about remote work uh, during COVID that shows that uh, the average time we spend with our uh, connected digital uh, sources is 40 hours per week, which means five working days. It's really dangerous. It's serious. It's even more serious than what I was so, uh, thinking. And, uh, um, and I am not a very fan of social media. However, all the multiple solicitations we receive from these technological devices are really taking time, which, which translates in more time we need to accomplish our tasks which means longer hours. So we will become less smart, less productive, and slower. So this is uh, why uh, it's very important that we as leaders value monotasking and discuss with our employees how practical ways to support them in avoid discussions. Also, it's fundamental that we establish rules. It's important to have flexibility. However, we have to establish strict rules, things that I've already done with my team, um, to prevent that they work around the clock. Because, okay, we, can, we, we tend to postpone and we also tend to take our, to have a look at the email, to reply to the email, even if it's late evening. So forcing, literally forcing our employees not to send emails after a certain hour, it's very important to prevent their burnout. It's another how, tool that we can give them. How that can be done? Uh, well, uh, there are companies that have put a limit, so you can't, even if you try, uh, you can't send emails after six o'clock in the evening, for example. Uh, I told uh, my, my team that whoever will send an email to me after five o'clock in the afternoon will receive a, a formal warning letter. It works. Oh, <laughs> Not wow. live, but it works. <laughs> but this is yet sometimes, Sinan, it's difficult for everyone. It's difficult for us. It's difficult for our team. So there are a few rules we had to uh, give them to make sure they do not deviate for their own health, mental health and well-being. Because their well-being will, will also impact the productivity of the entire workforce and the, the, the business. So this is absolutely important. Healthy and resourceful humans. This is what we True. really need. And in addition to the uh, focus, the, 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 the uh, management of focus, also the time management can can be supportive. Um, and this is where, for example, establishing again a routine can be very helpful. Even if we um, initially we support our employees to make a plan. Something I was reading from Harvard Business Review and I posted on LinkedIn a few days ago was about making a cr more credible uh, to-do list. Very often, we put so many things in our to-do list that at the end of the day, it is absolutely inevitable that we feel we haven't accomplished anything. And this is not because we were not effective, but because our to-do list, our expectations towards ourselves were too high. So making a more realistic uh, to-do list, putting there every day something that we know that at the end of the day when we complete that specific task will give us 
the sense, a very strong sense of accomplishment. This is absolutely important because this also will impact our motivation. And I'm saying on purpose, our motivation, because this is a common problem for leaders and for employees. And it's important to check during the day, to refocus every hour, to have a look at our to-do list, to make sure that we are on track. And at the end of the day, what's important when we review it is not to self-blame ourselves for, for what we haven't accomplished, but to review where we get, got distracted, what didn't work and what worked, so that the next day we would be more productive. And there is a, um, something on the slide which is taken from the seven habits of highly effective people from Stephen Covey, uh, um, which is a, a, a table which the quadrants called by the book uh, about the urgency or importance of the tasks we put in our to-do list. This is absolutely important because many tasks which are not important at all uh, risk to drain our focus and to to make us unproductive. Clear. And one final reflection. Do you have a question? No, it's clear. I love this slide as well. Thank you. A final reflection for all of us. Do we take enough time to switch off a recharge? And are we really willing to detox physically, mentally, and emotionally? Because as the, 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 the title of this uh, conversation says, the most important resource for our human capital is having a leader who is stable, human, vulnerable. This is abs and really absolutely important and fundamental because again, as I said many times during our conversation, humanity is the, the, the final ingredient that, and the most important one, that will allow our relationships to grow and thrive also in the post-COVID. Thank you. I'm happy to reply to all the questions and to open the conversation with the audience. Thank you for this great session. We have a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, it seems Noha with us, so she's thanking you for your comment and finding her session successful. Uh, Hi, we, we have a question. Uh, how do you see the labor regulation in Qatar changing or adapting to the pandemic? And what comes after? Do we expect any changes? Well, this is a very good question, and thank you for that. Um, well, I have to admit that the response that the Ministry of Labor has uh, given to the COVID, uh, it's outstanding. By imposing, I know it's hard for the business, especially for employers, but by um, imposing employers uh, the, um, to take care of the employees, even if they are terminated, and providing all employees with uh, uh, adequate financial support for those who lose the job, I found this absolutely outstanding. And uh, I really believe the Ministry of Labor also, thanks to the um, cooperation, the strong cooperation with the International Labor Organization, which opened a, a stable office, a project office uh, a couple of years ago, they are um, really raising the bar and uh, aligning to international standards and best practice. I'm very proud of their, uh, of their results. Of course, there is a lot to do, but they have just started and I can see the positive results and the, the, the very tangible actions that they are taking in favor of employees, especially for the, the, the category of works, workers, we are, which are the, 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 who are the weakest part of the relationship, of the employment relationships. Uh, Pascal, who asked in the morning, uh, is back and asking the question, what options can we use other than layoffs to control cost per QFC regulation? Can we reduce their basic plus allowance uh, fixed pay? If yes, shall we have their under mutual agreement? What about forcing free to use annual leave or unpaid leave? What options uh -huh. QFC firms can use? The QFC employment regulations provide different, um, there are different provisions that can uh, reply to these questions. First of all, about the annual leave. There is a provision in the employment regulations, Article 34, if I'm not wrong, that provides that the, the employer, the right to ask the employees for good reasons 
to take on a leave when the employer decides. Now, um, I would like to spend just a few words about this situation. Um, it's something that was unpredictable, but also it's not the employer's fault, nor the employee's fault. So I believe personally that we have to share the consequences. So to me, what I really say to everyone, to me, it's more important to have a job, even if my salary is reduced, even with less benefits than before, as long as, as I continue to work. Because work is not only about salary and financial aspects, it's about the self-realization. So this is the reason why when I am approached by employees asking me about their rights, I totally agree with them. But I also say, don't forget that keeping a job is the objective and the main goal for all of us, for all the um, labor market. Going back to the options that the QFC employment regulations provide to employers, uh, it is not prevented by the employment regulations that employers and employees change terms and conditions of employment. Of course, this must be done by a written agreement. Uh, again, the most important thing, in my opinion, is that um, we communicate with our employees. And the way we communicate makes a big difference. Don't, don't forget that when we, in, it's like in any human relation, if we impose our decision, we will face inevitably uh, resistance. While the moment the decision is the outcome of a conversation, of an exchange of uh, um, uh, opinions, ideas, where the employee is a voice and is given the opportunity to provide a feedback or uh, come up with other creative solutions. At that time, the agreement is a real agreement. And both parties will uh, avoid the anger, the frustration, and all the negative emotions that inevitably will impact also the um, performance of the employee after the decision is taken. So imagine if I impose to my employee a reduction of salary without previous discussion. What is the impact? And how uh, the impact would be if instead this decision comes after a conversation with my people, with my employees? I hope the, my reply uh, is uh, sufficient for Pascal, I, otherwise I'm happy to go deeper. And in any case, I'm always reachable for any query regarding to the QFC employment regulations, so feel free to write to me. Uh, my email is l.ingianni at qfc.ua. Sinan, probably we can uh, share it with them, um, with whoever would be interested to get more uh, or deeper information about this. Sure, I appreciate that. And I comment that your reply is very quick. Uh, another question, say, some companies are letting people go during this time and stopping benefits, benefits including housing allowance when the employees cannot get back home due to COVID-19 or transfer documents due to immigration department stopping. How should the employer handle this ethically and legally? Legally, employers have no obligations under the employment regulations, the QFC employment regulations, to pay anything to the employee. Morally, it's something completely different. And this is where the conversation between employers, employees, but also the institutions, because we have um, discussed a lot with the firms who are considering massive uh, layoffs uh, to find alternatives, which is not only in the interest of the employee, because th let's not forget that in a, possibly in a couple of months, business will start running again and we don't know how if it will be fast or not but we for sure will need human capital human resources now if we terminate now our employees and let them go we will keep in the country people with no uh, financial resources or support and for sure they will have to eat and pay the rent for their accommodation i find that an effort from the employer uh, preventing the total interruption of the relationship. So instead of the termination and unpaid leave period or any other solution, which is a temporary solution, 
which will allow also the employer to re uh, engage the employee when the crisis will be over or when, when the business will, will, uh, will uh, start running again. And this is also will translate for the employer in less recruiting costs, but also the cost of turnover because a new employee is an employee that has no experience about the environment, about the company culture. In addition to the travel bans that nobody knows when, will be re when and if will be removed hopefully soon. Uh, so there are, I would say that looking at the big picture, as we said initially, and uh, try to choose the, um, a win-win solution with employees, between employers and employees, would be the, the, a very wise uh, decision. Because it's an investment from the employer. Keeping employees in the country will uh, keep uh, the, 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 market, the labor market stable even if this will mean that they will have to spend to invest some money for that. Sure, clear. Uh, another question, uh, Muhammad Shahada is thanking, thank you Muhammad for your kind words. His question is, do organizations have an option or obligation to stay connected to laid off employees even after they are no longer part of the organization? In other words, can organizations leverage on existing resources to show care, empathy, and compassion towards ex-employees during tough times? Well, showing care, compassion, empathy, and humanity at all times should be a natural attitude because this is not about employees. It's about human relations. Human relations are the, the, probably the only important things that after COVID will matter. And as we said before, keeping showing empathy, taking care of people, regardless the existence of an employment relationship, will show our humanity and will keep the relation uh, alive in the future because people will never forget people there are a couple of things that i think um i read somewhere uh, many years ago people sometimes that we, with the memory and after years they don't remember our face but they definitely or our names but they remember the way we um treated them and if we treat people with care with empathy with humanity this will forever stay with them. And one of the other considerations, uh, nobody knows what will happen to us as individuals, as persons, as employees, as leaders. Keeping good employment, um, uh, human relations based on trust will be key in any uh, other stage of our life, for our present and for our future. This Thank is what you. I think. So even if there is no moral obligation or legal obligation to do so, please do it. It's a win-win. You will feel good and you will make other people feeling good. I agree. A question from Ula. You mentioned that it is okay to terminate an employee in Qatar due to the current uh, circumstances, the COVID-19 circumstances, circumstances. Do the law in Qatar support layoff due to the uh, pandemic? And what are the consequences pay the company should follow? Uh, well, in the, mm, uh, in the, neither in the QFC employment regulations nor in the state law 14 of 2004, um, the pandemic was, uh, <laughs> was an option or considered as a force majeure. So employees, uh, employers who want to terminate the relationship will have to stick with the contractual and legal provisions about the uh, notice for termination. So the notice period must be given to the employee, except there is a, a just cause to terminate the employment uh, without notice. But this is very uh, um, limited to specific cases, both in the QFC employment regulations and in the state law. So employers must provide the notice period. Uh, another question from Pascal. First slide, you mentioned short term. What options can we use? Sorry, can you say it again? Uh, in the first slide, uh, yeah. you mentioned something about short term. Yes. What short term, long term, and um, medium and long term of our decision. It's actually what we were saying before. We have to look at um, our specific situation. Even if in the short term, I will reduce the costs 
my costs of recruiting um, and, and replacing the employees um, that have been terminated may be higher in a couple of months. We don't know because, again, it will be, depend on the travel bans, on which country will allow employees uh, or people to move. There, were, there are so many unpredictable um, aspects that the evaluation of short, medium, and long-term impact of our current decision must be done by, by all leaders. The options are different. As a, um, there was a slide, uh, um, uh, I, I just go back at the very, yeah, unpaid leave, reduced uh, working hours, paid time off. There are different, different options. But what we found out during discussions we, between employers and employees and the Employment Standards Office is that by uh, conversation aiming at, at finding um, uh, win-win solutions for all of us and all of them, employees came up with solutions that the employer didn't think about and we, which were very um, valuable. So talk to your people. They might come despite the frustration because they will see their salary um, cut or other benefits, um, the, the loss of other benefits. If we explain honestly, transparently, that also the employer is vulnerable and the business is vulnerable, they will come up, they will cooperate, they will support you in finding the appropriate solution with less costs for both of you. And this is actually what we have experienced in the discussions with the companies and the employees, employers and employees who have reached out to us to, find, to support them in finding solutions, which is one of the key aspects in the QFC. We, we really provide um, services and assistance and guidance to the firms on a free of charge basis. And this is where our commitment becomes important because our goal is not to protect the employee or the employer, is to support the employment relationship, to improve the quality of the employment relationships. Also, from the aspect re from aspects related to, uh, in, in situations like this, um, in, during crisis, where the uh, external perspective may be very helpful. True. We'll take one more question, if you allow me, uh, Luigi. Last question is about, it's asking you, what's more recommended? Rehiring terminated employee who are not happy with the company decision and feeling insecure, or hiring a new employee? Well, uh, <laughs> very That's good. That's a tough one. Uh, it, Again, we go back to what we said before, it depends on the way the employment relationship was terminated, the way we managed the, the difficult situation of terminating an employee. Because if the decision was fair, uh, and was fair but also was communicated with compassion, empathy, in a human way where the employee was listened, was given time to express emotions. I don't see any obstacle in taking, um, in rehiring a person who already knows the company, has the knowledge, the know-how, knows the environment, knows the rules, and all the practical things that a new employee must be trained to at least, so, and, and for a certain period before it gets um, the same experience in that specific role of uh, a former employee. However, this doesn't mean that it's wrong hiring new employees. It depends, again, on how we managed the situation before we uh, terminate the people and interrupted the employment relationship. Clear. Luigi, thank you very much. It was really amazing to have you with us today. Uh, the thank information, you. the questions, uh, the answers you provided were great. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thanks uh, to our audience who uh, shared with us their time and join us on those great sessions. The videos will be available uh, momentarily, so uh, users can view previous sessions if we're not attended. And uh, just hopefully we'll meet uh, in a physical event uh, in a few months, inshallah. Inshallah. And thank you uh, all, to, of course, to Byte.com for organizing this and giving me this opportunity, but also to all the audience and for your passion. Ramadan Karim to all of you. Shukran. Ramadan Karim. Thank you. Shukran. Bye.